So today I'm going to show you how I cut longer cross cuts safely, accurately, and repeatable on my 30 inch table saw. Stay tuned. Hi guys, so for those of you that don't know, my name is Michael and I am the woodworker for MK Designs. And yeah, today I'm gonna show you what I came up with to be able to make longer cross cuts on my table saw. Uh, as most of you know, I have the Rigid 4512 and it's only 30 inches long, um, 30 inch rip capacity. I know a lot of people out there have the 52 inch and all that. Honestly, I'd probably never make a rip cut that wide, but... You, there is a need to make cross cuts and it's hard to do repeatably and safely and accurately um, with, a, with a smaller table saw because you don't have the fence to set up and you can't you know do the little spacer block and okay register against that and then make a cross cut yeah it, it's it's almost impossible to do so I came up with an option and the only thing it needs, the only thing you absolutely need for it is you need um, a crosscut sled. And I'm sure, I'm sure most of you that have a table saw out there, you have a crosscut sled. Now, I know that if you have a miter saw, it's easier to do on that and safer and all that. But a lot of people don't have a miter saw, or if they do, they don't have a miter saw station, or they also don't have one that's big enough. And it's hard to make the, the cuts repeatable. Um, so if you need to make cut like four or five, six bores that are the same length, but you don't have a miter saw station or you don't have a miter saw at all and you can't get it set up to be able to make the cuts repeatable then you you, you, you kind of have to play around a little bit and try to figure things out <clears throat> so this is something that i came up with and it works really well surprisingly well actually it works a lot better than i thought it would and yeah, so if this is your first time here, please hit that subscribe button and make sure you click that little bell so you get notified whenever I come up with a new video. I do have some other videos coming up. Uh, those of you that follow my channel, you know that Kat and I are working on the boats and we are still working on those. Uh, I actually recorded this video before we even started on the boats, but I decided to, I didn't do the intro till now. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so the way this thing works, is you can see it's attached to my crosscut sled fence and I'll show you that here in a second I got these four bolts back here holding it in and I got this block here that slides all along it so the way I do it is I'll take the first board that I'm gonna cut and I'll put a mark on it I don't know if you can see that or not but I got a little mark right there just to test it and of course you have to have the blade raised up <laughs> because you're using the blade as a reference point. So what I'll do is I'll push the crosscut sled forward and I will line the mark up on the blade where I want it to cut. So like right there. And then I'll take the block, slide it up against the other end of the board. Once I have that set, I will take the clamp, clamp it down, and now the block won't move. So what I can do is I make the first cut, then I swap out the board. I don't have to mark any boards from here because this will give me my exact cut every single time. I can cut as many boards as I want to the exact same length. And most of the time, that is the most important thing. You don't, you, you want it to be as close to the measurement and the plans as possible. But what matters is that all the pieces that are supposed to be the same length are the same length. And that's, this is the best way I can find to do it. <laughs> Honestly, I'm, I'm amazed it took me this long to come up with this thing, but yeah, I did. <laughs> it makes it so much easier. Okay, so this is how I have it attached to the fence. Um, I've got these four bolts here, and I drilled five holes, and I've got an insert in there for the fifth hole. For the fifth one, I just only had four three-eighths inch bolts, um, so I'll just have to pick up another bolt next time I'm at Home Depot or whatever, and 
to pop in there. Uh, the reason I have so many is because I wanted to make sure this thing sat tight to this fence because I know this fence is true. I know this is straight. So that way I can make sure that the whole thing is straight. And yeah, it's, it's referencing off of this fence, which is easy to do with get measured with the five cut method and get it make sure it's square to the blade. And with it referencing off of this fence and this being straight, that means that every cut from here on will be straight as well. So yeah, let's get into how I made it. Okay, so I also wanted to show you this because I know a lot of you do have a miter station and a miter saw and my miter station goes to 42 inches. Um, if I made it longer, it would go longer, obviously. You know, I made mine seven feet versus eight feet, so I don't have a full four feet on either side. But one thing that I do is, this is one reason why I wanted the fence. When I, when, when, if you watch that video, you'll, you'll hear me talk about why I decided to go with the fence instead of not like some, some people have, you know, Mark Spagnuolo didn't put one on his and he had great reasons for it, but I decided I wanted a fence and this is one of the reasons why. Uh, what I do is I just have this piece of MDF, this is just a piece of scrap that I had laying around and I got a piece, two pieces of half inch Baltic birch that I had laying around and I cut them and I laminated these two pieces together and I can unscrew and screw this and move it wherever I need to, but I, what I do is I take this, I take the MDF, and I screw it into my fence wherever I need to, and it gives me a reference point. So instead of referencing off my fence, I'll be referencing off the MDF. So it's basically like an auxiliary fence. And I can move this piece, slide this up and down. I can even get a longer board if I feel like I need to to have a little bit more support up by the blade. And I just screw this into my existing fence, and then I take my mark, I line it up with the salt, with the blade, and I set my stop block here at the end of the board where the cut's gonna, you know, where, the, where I need the cut at. And I can make those cuts as many times as I need to. And then when I'm done with those cuts, I can just remove this and everything's back to normal. So that's another option. Okay, now we can get into the actual build. So the first thing I need to do, obviously, is I need to cut down my plywood to the side thickness that I want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take make four pieces and I'm going to eliminate two together and I'm going to eliminate the other two together and one's going to be my fence and the other's going to be the support piece and that'll be explained further along in the video. But I'll, I'm just going to rip this down. It's, this is some scrap Baltic birch that I had from another build and I'm just going to rip it down to four equal pieces and then laminate them together. Okay, so I'm going to laminate these together like I just said. And anyway, the trick here is I want to make sure I get enough glue. I want to make sure there are no voids at all. So I'm just going to lay all four pieces out and spread out as much glue as I can. I probably use too much, but it's better to have too much in, in, in a situation like this than it is too little. Because you definitely don't want these to come start to come apart um, and throw off your straight line and all that so yeah make sure you get enough glue and then just clean up the squeeze out after you get it together yeah i know it looks like i'm putting the clamps on wrong but i actually picked this little trick up from nick ferry and what i'm doing is i'm just putting the clamps on there to pull the two pieces together so that they're perfectly flush on the sides that way when i put my clamps down to actually hold them in place they'll stay and the glue won't be able to slip them around when the while i'm pre applying pressure from the clamps and now I'm going to just put the clamps on to hold them together and clean up the squeeze out. Oh, uh, yeah, and I'm going to put some pin nails in it just to help hold them together. Now, once the glue has had time to set and cure, uh, I'm going to clamp the auxiliary fence to my crosscut sled fence. And I'm going to drill small holes. I think I did 1 16th inch holes or 5 seconds. I don't remember exactly which. Um, to mark where I want my inserts and my bolts to go that are going to actually hold this onto the fence. Now, I know what some people are going to say. They're going to say you shouldn't have metal that close to your blade. Well, the thing of it is, is because it's on the crosscut sled and it's on the fence of the crosscut sled, I put it far enough away from the blade where it will never come into contact with the blade. If it does, then I have bigger problems than metal hitting my blade. Just saying.
Now, once I have those drilled, I'm gonna take the auxiliary fence off and then I'm gonna drill the 3 8 inch holes, maybe a little bit bigger than 3 8 inch to accommodate the bolts that I'm gonna to use to actually hold this, hold the auxiliary fence onto the crosscut sled fence. Once the holes are drilled, then make sure you sand the inside of your fence to get rid of all the burrs because they can actually interfere with the alignment. So just 60, 80 grit sandpaper on a block, block sander and sand them off. So now that I have the holes drilled in the crosscut sled fence, I'm going to drill the holes in the auxiliary fence to accept the threaded inserts that I'm going to use. I'm using 3 8 inch bolts, so I'm using 3 8 inch inserts, so I have to drill the hole at a half inch and then thread the inserts into that those holes. And obviously the next step is to put the inserts in. Uh, they came with this little tool, or I actually bought this little tool to be able to put them in easier, but I actually ran into a problem with that. Yeah, I can't get the tool out of the insert without pulling the insert back out because it's just really too tight. So the insert has these little slots in the side to be able to accept a screwdriver to be able to drive them in with. And what I wound up having to do is go get a flathead screwdriver and um, put it into one of the little slots and break the tool loose <laughs> and I did get it finally out that way so yeah Once I have all the inserts installed into the auxiliary fence, then I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the crosscut sled fence and make sure everything's lining up right and make any adjustments that I need and go from there. Now, with the auxiliary fence attached to the crosscut sled, I'm going to bring my support piece or my base or bottom over and I'm going to line it up with the crosscut sled because I want to make sure that it lines up exactly to the edge of the crosscut sled not a huge gap between the two and definitely not too far in so I'm just going to use the crosscut sled as a reference to figure out exactly where I want to put it and line it up mark it and then attach it of course first I have to cut it to length so yeah, that's the next step. And then I'll attach it. So the way I'm gonna attach it is similar to how I laminated the pieces. I'm gonna glue, I'm gonna use glue and glue it on. Then I'm gonna use some pin nails and tack it on. And then I'm actually gonna drive some screws into the bottom to make sure it doesn't move at all, ever. So glue, nails, and screws. It's not moving. And of course I used too much glue again, so I had to yeah, wipe up the excess with a damp cloth. And of course I'm going to countersink the screws, so I'm going to pre-drill a pilot hole and with a countersink bit and then drive the screws in. And that should hold it forever. And then I kind of figured I needed to make a stop lock, so I'm going to put that together real quick. I just cut off some pieces to fit around it that I could clamp down tight and I'm going to use glue and pen nails and pen nails. Yeah, I used a few too many, but yeah, it is what it is. And let the glue set up and it's good to go. And naturally the next step is to play with, I mean, I mean try it out and make sure it works properly. <laughs> so yeah, of course it works great. So. It's a success in my eyes. Okay, so that's it. Um, it. 
it was actually a really fun build. I had a lot of fun trying to figure it out and figure out how, how I wanted to make it and all that. But it works, like I said, it works really, really well. And I, I know a lot of you are probably going to complain about seeing my tarp in the background. Today's actually a pr pretty cold day. I need to turn my heater on here in just a minute because I'm starting to get cold. That's why the tarp's up. Normally, I have a view of Pikes Peak, and people love seeing that. I know. I will have it back. I promise. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, like I said, we'll keep giving you updates on the kayak. And if you're watching, if you're following us on Facebook or Instagram, uh, we actually put the updates there. And yeah. So until next time, guys. Happy creating.